something else. Too. I was watching the press briefing last night, uh -huh. and some reporter, talk about a leading question, asks Donald Trump. He says, well, how are people going to deal with the new normal? You know, for example, at a stadium, if they have 100,000 seats, it'll have to be 60. He goes, no, excuse me, excuse me. That's, there's not going to be a new normal. They're going to be back to full seats. People are like, oh, my gosh, can you believe this? Can you, do you understand yes. what that would do to people's business? Yeah. You, to cut their profit capabilities yeah. by 40% because of the sniffles? I get it's worse than the sniffles. I'm exaggerating to make a right. point, but I don't really care. I'm not, I'm not gonna apologize anymore. COVID doesn't scare me that much compared to the unemployment and crippling effects. Do you know what would happen to restaurants oh, if they can't it, allow yeah. people to be there? To every single, do you know what happened to colleges? Right. Imagine Notre Dame, imagine UT, imagine SMU. It's like, oh, you can only have 50% capacity. No. Right now, sure, but yeah. forever? They assume that if, and this is by design, just like the ABC special, they want to ask that question. So it looks like Donald Trump right. is fighting against the current by saying, no, 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 eventually we're going to get back to normal. And they want to make that, they want to make that seem like he's an animal. He's right, of course. No one yeah. out there, you don't run a business. You must have no idea how thin profit margins are. And people have to stay up all night with TurboTax, for all I know. I don't know what program they use. I have a guy. Bill recommended him to me. Right. People have to, they have to uh, take great care in addressing these numbers. You just want to cut it in half? Well, you moron. Yeah, well, the WNBA is actually in favor of this. It would increase attendance. Yeah. They're, uh. so, <laughs> they're, they're happy for this. So they, have, well, they have a yeah. weed but, hey, cannon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, do you remember when uh, in 1918 the pandemic killed millions of people around the world, how we banned all public gatherings forever after that point and had mm -hmm. no football right, games and no right. theater attendance and no restaurants open yeah. and we we all just shut down and died. Right. You remember that didn't happen. I it killed I think millions of people around the world, the and we didn't do these things. The intonation was that you, you went the opposite I, no. of that. You uh, were you, man. See, sometimes I see you. what you were saying there. <laughs> and the same when people talk about Dr. Fauci. Listen, you don't. It, when we're talking about a problem that is all encompassing, and I will say at this point, the economic impact. And by the way, because of the economic impact, it has an even greater toll on the right. health impact yes. of the country. When you look at suicide, when you look at mental health, when you look at people who are more likely to uh, develop addictions, or people, frankly, who are just more likely to become unhealthy because they're not nearly as active, especially right. if you're yeah. arresting people for going out jogging with their wives in parks. Yeah. If you are arresting yeah, exactly. a man for jogging alone on the beach, you are telling people that short of having a home gym, they can't take part in any physical activity. Yeah. So I this is unreal to me uh, at, this, at this point <laughs> that they want to suggest, <laughs> Fauci, great. Got it. He's not taking into account any of the economic ramifications. No. Just like you wouldn't ask exclusively an economist what we should do for social distancing. Right. He's an expert in social distancing. Just like cigars. We've talked about it on the show. Yeah. If, you ask a, if you ask a doctor, right? And I've asked this to a doctor. Okay, don't want to. Never smoke. Got it. What about cigars? What about like a cigar a day or like a couple cigars a week? Right. Well, you should never smoke. What are the actual risks of me smoking a couple of cigars a week? You should never smoke. What are the risks? Right. Statistically, there's <laughs> yeah. actually a 0% mortality increase uh, or of any cancers combined. The FDA releases as a statement if you have a couple of cigars right. a week, but you should never smoke. I didn't ask your opinion. I asked the risks so right. I can make an assessment and make a decision. And right now we have very real numbers, 22 million people filing for unemployment. Yep. I get it. You like the doctor. You like to accuse Republicans of being anti-science, but guess what? We do have to take into account the fact that people have no ability to live at this point. Right. So exactly. you can't only ask the doctor is what I'm saying. Right. You need all different kinds of input. And they, for some reason, this is the elitism from the, from the left. They mock Donald Trump if he has, he has anyone on his board of reopening the economy. I think Tim Cook's on the board, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And why, is it, why is it that people who are doctors uh, are the only authoritative experts, according to the left, but people who've created a business from the ground up and employed right. potentially dozens, hundreds, th there's no merit, there's no added va societal value there? God, I just, it's yeah, remarkable yeah. to me. I, I do find that um, this is an intriguing moment in history. And I will say this, a compliment, you do both. You do both. He's a lawyer. So you did all the schooling, but right. you also started your own firm. I did. Right? Yeah. You could have taken, you could have been a clerk, you could have worked your way up and hoped that you became a partner at a big firm, but you started your own, and I respect. Yeah. How hard was that? Really hard. To do it's by hard. yourself. It's hard every day. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I was fortunate to work with some uh, good friends to start the firm and to build it up and, you know, to be where we are. And it's it's a, it's a lot of fun to be able to work with people. But I, I will say right now that the thing is 
really unique about where we are is normally if you were concerned about the economy and you just were like, you know, I don't want to talk about the prevailing wisdom, you right. would probably do it at work, you do it at a bar, you do yeah. it at church, you do it with your buddies, whatever it may be. But all the normal places that we would talk about those kinds of things about, well, I don't know if I really believe CNN or Governor Whitmer, all right. those things. We don't have any of those. Instead, the only place that we're looking right now, by and large, or we're allowed to look, is Facebook and Twitter. And the right. voices on Facebook and Twitter are predominantly hysterical. And I will tell you, yeah. it is actually people in my position who have the ability to work uh, outside their office and don't have to have their workers come in um, during this time and can relatively still keep their business on that are saying, well, why can't you just stay home? But I will tell yeah. you that the vast majority of people on the left and the right, when you actually talk to them right now, are telling you, why aren't we talking about opening the economy? Right. And, it, and the reason is because those people are suffering. If you work in hospitality, restaurants, all of those different businesses, and all the businesses that support them. Right. So when you're looking at the news right now, when you're hearing people say, well, I, it's very clear, everyone's on board with us keeping shut down until 2028 to kill this coronavirus. Jeez. It's wrong. Yeah. It's just yeah. flat out and wrong. And you know what? It's